Good morning, everybody. Vinayak, uh, Jayadeep, Rahul, Nakul, Nirupama, Mahesh. Lovely. <laughs> Mahesh, you are, are you in India? I mean, generally, it would be too early in the too early in the UK. Good morning. So it's okay. So getting back into the routine. So. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. All right. Good. Awesome. Uh, folks, uh, I'm sorry, I think we're starting a little late than as usual, uh, 11, 1 by the clock. So uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to whichever part of the world that you all are taking this call. Uh, today, we are going to be what talking is... about uh, movie investing. I can't hear you, Sharath. We'll re-log in. Sure. All right. Uh, everybody else able to hear me well? Awesome. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, so um, today, like we... I wanted to call this movie financing, but when I realized movie financing, a lot of folks started having a, a mild uh, attack in terms of, okay, now are we going to be sponsoring movies as well? Uh, no, that's not the thing. I thought I would you know, use a different term when compared to invoice discounting for movies. So I let uh, Harman and Setu Raman uh, go about, uh, you know, not steal their thunder. We'll introduce them in just a bit. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking this call on a Saturday. I'm glad that you're doing it. Some of you are also going to be attending the call later in the evening, which means even more homework. Uh, I know sometimes working with Sharath can be a pain, but I think it's in the best interest to make sure our monies don't go. At least there are lesser chances for our money to go down. With that said, uh, how many of us are on this call today thinking that, you know, uh, I will have to fund movies? What do we understand by movie financing? Just to set the tone so that, you know, I borrow a little more time for all the folks who are taking a little more longer to come on call. The short talk, like they call it. Unmutual lines, yeah, no problem. Go ahead. I mean... Again, I don't need to repeat the dry. It's a it's a video call. Please get your videos on. I don't mind whichever part of the world you're taking your videos from or whichever rooms, as long as you all are comfortable sharing. I will not make judgments and sure will the host as well. So go ahead. Uh, turn on your videos. Ask me the question. What do you think movie financing is about? Any idea at all? No right answers, no wrong answers. Crowdsourcing? Sorry? Crowdsourcing to fund a movie. Okay, that's one answer. What else? Anybody? Crowdsourcing? Sure. That's that's uh, taken up. Uh, Ishwar, I've got you there. But that's not the answer. The diversification. At all? Another asset class. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking, Mahesh. Yes, it's another asset class. But when I say... But bring some excitement. Uh, <laughs> I like the way how you're covering the word risk with excitement. But uh, let, let's say... Uh, uh, okay, when I say movie financing, uh, what are the fear points that come to you? I mean, uh, you know, uh, we've heard hush money that gets in. We've heard about uh, producers, directors going bankrupt. You know, people, uh, folks like superstars like Amitabh Bachchan also were not spared. So wh what what are thoughts that are coming to you when we're saying movie financing? No right answers, no wrong answers, high folks. Risk. Very high risk. Very high risk. Okay, what else? Amit is saying, I've been facing the audio issues. Da, 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 da. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, cool. What else? Anybody else, folks? Come on, I know it's a Saturday morning, but I can't uh, bribe you all enough. I mean, uh, yes, it's a video call. So uh, let's, let's begin sharing a few pointers. How many of you think that you'll actually be funding movie directors or movie producers? Anybody in the room? If Yes, I'm, I'm thinking that this is going to be a, a financing for a movie producer or a director. And what happens if the movie is a flop? Right? <laughs> very nice question, Kavita. And it's always nice to have you because I think you're a very strong critic of what is being produced. And see, Nirupam is already nodding her head. So this is the advantage of having a video shared on because then at least that way you'll know Sharath is not having clientele, just, you know, like Amazon fake reviews coming on board. So that's very nice. Now, with all the short talk that is done for three minutes, I think we'll give uh, the stage over to Harman and Setu Raman uh, to go about educating us on what this asset class is all about. Uh, Setu Raman and, uh, uh, you know, Harman, before I get you, uh, before I give the stage to you, I need you to know the audience that you're work go going to be addressing today are one, uh, for lack of a better word, they are in the, uh, they are affluent families, they have the money to invest. But they are very skeptical. A good majority of them have skipped that entire leg of having to be risk averse. I mean, they're, you know, um, having to deal with risk in a more mature manner. So the approach has been, you know, FD plus mutual funds. Okay. And bulk of the audience is getting an exposure to this in terms of SIRF mutual funds, say, NEA types. 
So yes, they have been investing in companies like Giraffe. They have invested in companies like Asti. So they understand the drill of invoice discounting. And uh, at the same time, they are very skeptical about new opportunities. A good majority of them have started looking at alternatives only. Uh, they have started uh, exploring alternatives only. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, only after you know investing smaller bits. So a good majority of them started investing with Giraffe One Investment for a good six months, and after that investment kept maturing, kept getting reinvested, and now one year later, a good majority of them have got taken that one lakh to five lakh. Some of them at ten lakhs, and a very small majority at. A 20 lakh number as well. So where I'm getting at with this is, uh, they understand the risk, but what's more important is I would want you all to uh, uh, address to the audience in terms of how you'll filter, narrow down, and mitigate the risk so that you know it becomes easier to uh, get onto the, like Mahesh said, exciting journey. So stage all over to you guys, Setu and uh, uh, Harman. Thanks, Sharad. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you, Sharad. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. And thank you, everyone, for joining this session. And uh, can, uh, shall I, can I get the uh, screen share access? Yes, yeah, sorry. I, I forgot. Just a minute. Uh, Sethu Raman, I'm going to give you co-host access. You are co-host now. And, uh, yep, you're on. Thanks. Can you see my screen, everyone? Yes. Done. Thank you. So while while you're setting up shop, uh, Siram, very quickly, uh, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, any questions that you'll have, I, please don't unmute your lines and ask them during the call. Uh, have them documented or put them on the chat. We'll address all of them towards the end. Right. Uh, I've told Siram and Harman to finish this within about forty minutes. Uh, so let's let's do our best to make sure we complete the entire thing within one hour's time. All right. All over to you, Siram. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Sharat. Thank you. So good morning again to everyone. So. Today, we will let you know how you can earn a fixed returns by investing in movies. May, okay. Will it be through a crowdfunding or will it be through financing? We'll get to know the answers very shortly from our side. So I'll quickly jump into the agenda of the session. And so in this session, we'll I will cover in detail about myself, about my finding founding team and about how we started this company and about our funding part. And later, my colleague Harman will be explaining you about the structure of this invoice in, in this invoice. In, 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 investing investment product uh, how we we have how it works in this media industry how it works what are the risks involved in the involved in this particular investment product and how we are mitigating those risks and also later i will cover you about the curation product how we are cura curating this particular opportunity before we bring it onto the platform and later we'll have a q and a session now moving to our founding team uh, to introduce uh, pradeep pradeep is the co-founder and ceo of this company uh, Pradeep is the uh, is an ISB alumni and he's also a chartered accountant. And myself, Sedu, and my colleague Shira Manex, we both are from engineering background. Uh, to tell about us, uh, we have a decade of experience in this media and entertainment segment uh, where myself and Pradeep, we were in the OTT business prior to Better Invest, where we launched our OTT platform called Hero Talkies, where we distributed Tamil movies in the overseas market. So being in this industry for a long time, we understand this space very well. So we were even the first players to launch this OTT platform for the Tamil movies in the back then in 2012-2013. Uh, we were even educating the production officers about the additional way of monetizing their content. At that time, there were no OTTs. Like we were like educating production officers. This is this is some mode of uh, monetization that they can do for their content. And from there, we went on to become the biggest subscription OTT platform in the OCS market. Uh, from there till now, uh, there was some significant change happening in the market after COVID. Uh, if you would have seen uh, people start, I mean, people moving towards theater significantly dropped. Uh, before COVID, theater was their major and primary revenue source for the production house. Whenever they produce a movie, they are heavily dependent on the theatrical revenue. But things significantly changed. As I told, COVID uh, changed everything. People started <laughs> through OTT platforms. Then OTT has been started acquiring contents with the range of theatrical revenue, like whatever the producer used to get from theaters, OTT is ready to pay that money for the producers there. There is a catch, a catch again where the OTT will pay only the, an advance payment of 20 to 30 percentage to the production houses and then they will pay the remaining payments later. And there is a cash flow gap. That is when we identified this cash flow gap and we identified there is an opportunity to for this last mile financing in this picture and then 
uh we we thought of converting this into one secured asset class and enabling this to the investors that's how all the better invest came in picture uh to talk about our funding part uh, we raised our pre seed in the last year june 2022 where we raised some of uh, 2.8 cr in the last year june and recently last month we closed our seed round where we have closed around 5 cr so in total we have raised around uh, 8 cr value in our company and to talk about our uh, lead investors few of our lead investors second uh we, there were like 11 angel investors who have participated in both the rounds and few to talk about a few lead lead investors in this both the rounds mr suresh krishna who is the uh, ex president of kadai tamil nadu chapters and mr manoj and mr lankalingam they both were active investors in this chennai startup ecosystem and to tell about mr sunil, sunil kumar singh he is also an angel investor uh, he has invested in across 80 plus startups across the country he has been investing heavily on fintechs and mobility area and this is more about our investor side and to talk about our funding part uh, we as i told we have uh, raised so far uh, 1 million in cumulative of both seed and pre seed and we have a runway till december 2024 uh, and coming to our break even part we have uh, i mean we are going to do a beta positive in next couple of months where once we have gone across the aim of 100 100 cr in the platform where we are closely done around uh, 100 CRs GTV and the platform, and we are close, close, closely moving towards that break-even part in a couple of months. So in the next slides, we will see in detail about how this particular product has been structured, how we have uh, uh, structured this product in this media industry and how it works in this media industry. So my colleague Harman will be explaining you about all the structure, about the uh, way it works in this particular media industry and about the dy business dynamics in this media industry. Over to you, Harman. Thank you, Sehdu. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining today's session. Uh, Sharad, thank you so much for giving uh, bringing this opportunity. And as you had started off uh, the question of uh, asking everybody on the webinar session today for what is the understanding of movie financing and if, if they are going to be uh, producing a movie or crowdfunding, I badly wanted to give this answer because this was the same question that uh, Sedu had asked me when I was joining uh, Betanway. So I've been a part of the team from the very beginning and the excitement was also the same when I had joined. I wanted to understand exactly. I know I understand the concept because I come from a finance background. I understand the concept of inverse discounting. But however, in movies was something very, very different, very new. And I'm really proud to say I'm a part of the organization of the company where we are the only ones and we are pioneering this particular uh, asset class in the country. So uh, I'll go into the product and uh, I, I'm slowly going to break the suspense of exactly how uh, inverse discounting in the movie business happens. So to start off with earlier, I mean, even till date, if somebody had to ask me a question, uh, how does movie financing work? So the first question we have seen or we have heard in the past that there's something called crowdfunding that happens where majority, for example, say 100 people are funding and pulling in together, say a value of 100 crore rupees, and they're trying to produce a movie, and that movie makes some business. And the movie business is entirely going to be dependent on the performance of the movie, which is the story or the actor or the, the countries in which it's releasing, how much business it makes. So that is the value to the proportion of the commitment or the contribution made by an individual towards that crowdfunding will be the ratio of, or the proportion, I can say, of the profit or the loss that will be shared. A crowdfunding structure. Now, as Sedu had mentioned in the beginning, that we have changed the structure because we understand the business in and out because of the experience that the founders have from the same uh, field of business. So, I will explain, I will go into the product before I go into exactly how this inverse discounting works. I'll give a small uh, brief of how a producer, a movie producer, or a movie production house actually they make income. Uh, even recently, there has been a video from uh, Mr. Karan Johar where he has been explaining in, a, uh, in a, a news interview exactly how the business works for movie production houses nowadays. Earlier, it was just a theater, theater release, and that's the only income that they are going to be dependent on. So, there are multiple sources of income for a movie producer. First, being the core source of income that is the theatrical release of that particular movie. Now, a theatrical release will happen within the country and outside the country. Now, the income that is going to get generated from a theater income that is only going to be purely dependent on the performance of the movie. Oh, nowadays, it is dependent on reviews and people go in and watch and whatever 
the money comes in, that is the profit or the loss that is going to be there for the production houses. But then after the involvement of uh, OTTs and music companies and uh, TV channels who are also buying the rights of these movies. So these are digital rights licenses that are sold by the movie producers apart from the theater release. So first income is theater release. The second major source of income for a movie production house will be the OTT platforms. Like in India, we have majorly actively uh, operating OTTs, Netflix, Amazon, Hotstar, Sony. So producers are selling the movie to OTTs, also making income. Then they are also selling the music rights. Like we have heard of it's T series, Z music. So these companies also buy the rights of the songs of that particular movie. Plus, at last, so first as audience, we get to see the movie in theater. We missed it. We have a subscription. Then we watch it on Netflix or Amazon. We have missed that. Then it comes to TV channels. So the last source is the TV channels, which is called the satellite rights, also through which it is sold. And the production house, they are making some income out of this. Now, as we know, there are major four sources. One is directly in theaters and the other three are digital rights, which is sold to these different platforms. Now, there are two kind of contracts because this is a movie, this is a license, digital license. So it is a contract that is signed between the movie producer and the OTT slash satellite rights or the music company. Now, as I mentioned first, Theater income is only dependent on performance of the movie. I'm just reiterating the same point again twice or thrice for that to be a comparison between theater income and the income that is going to get generated via other sources. Now, example, say the producer is selling now the movie to OTT Netflix or say music right to Z and then satellite to some Sony network or Star Network. In this case, there are two kind of contracts. The first contract is called the revenue sharing contract. The second contract is called the outright sale contract. Now, in revenue sharing, as the word explains, the term explains itself that the revenue, which is dependent on the performance of the movie, that will get shared between the OTT and the producer of whatever percentage ratio that they have spoken for that particular movie. So the movie will do business on the OTT. It depends on the number of watch hours or the views that comes for that particular movie or somebody has rented that particular movie on the OTT platform. That's how the income is going to get generated. Now, again, this is totally dependent on the performance of the movie. Likewise, it could be with satellite rates or music rights as well. So this is the first kind of contract for digital license. Now, the second kind of contract is called the outright sale contract. Now, in an outright sale contract, what happens is when there is a sale agreement between the producer and OTT, say Netflix, Netflix will promise to buy this movie at a fixed price, irrespective of whatever the business is going to occur on the OTT platform via this particular movie. Now, there is another question, why would OTTs, companies or music companies or satellite networks buy such movie at a fixed price where they do not know what is the performance of the movie, how it is going to get a reaction from the public, right? So th there are primary reasons behind it, which is majorly being the market value the itself. Hmm. So what happens is, for example, now we know there is a movie called Jawan of uh, Shah Rukh Khan that is released. So OTT businesses, they understand that there's a market share of Shah Rukh Khan. These are the number of people that will definitely watch the movie irrespective of theater or not. They will definitely come to OTT. If they have the subscription, they are going to watch it. Now, that is the value of the market of the director or the actor or the music director involved in the movie. So they understand the business. Hence, they go into a second kind of contract. It usually happens for either a movie which has a very strong content where the OTT has watched the movie. They know that this particular story is definitely going to bring in a lot of watch hours for them. Or it is going to be a major actor, big actor movies that they know definitely the audience will at least come and watch the movie once. So they are going to make a fixed revenue of fixed business out of the same. Plus, any OTT business, because there are four or five major players in the market, what they would want, they would want these big movies to come to their platform because they would want their audience to continuously stay on the platform itself and keep subscribing. So this is the model of OTT, but however, the contract type is outright sale agreement where the OTT has promised to pay a fixed value. So... Better invest, we do not handle or deal with the revenue sharing contracts. 
because these contracts are dependent again on the performance of the movie similar going in terms of crowdfunding we don't want to be in such business where the source or the income is going to be unknown so it is a very risky territory that we don't want to step into but what we have found out in the outright sale agreement because you know the sale value is fixed it does not matter if the story is going to be good or not ODT has already promised and these ODTs are major listed companies in their own countries, big companies like Prime, Netflix. So they are listed in the stock market. So we know the, the capacity of these companies are going to be in regards of payments that will definitely happen to the production houses. And we're talking a couple of pros or so, that is the transaction volume. Now, what happens exactly in an outright sale agreement? I'll go a little deep into that because better invest, we pick up these agreements only for discounting. Now, as I'm using the word discounting, I'm not using the word invoice because these are contracts and these contracts are the ones that we are discounting. Why we are discounting these contracts? What is the opportunity? What is the reason behind the discounting of this particular contract? What are the situations that arise due to which the opportunity of discounting actually occurs at better in this platform? So let's take an example. Say uh, Bahubali movie. There is going to be, say, part three of Bahubali movie. The production houses have already completed the movie and say there are four or five different OTT platforms like Netflix and Amazon. They are competing to buy the movie. And say Netflix has uh, grabbed the opportunity from Bahubali 3 makers for a value of 1 crore rupees under the contract outright sale agreement. This is the contract which under which they are buying. So that's the example for a value of 1 crore rupees. And the movie, say, suppose, is releasing on the 15th of October. And we are around 17th or 18th of September. We are around 16th of September. So it's one month release from today. Netflix has bought the movie for one crore. What will actually happen? This is what actually happens in the industry. It's an industry practice that the OTTs do not pay the entire sale value, the agreement value, immediately after buying the contract or grabbing the contract. They don't do that because the movie is yet to be delivered to the ODT companies, right? They have got the they have got the agreements, they've got the license in their name. But however, they cannot start playing the movie until and unless the movie has released in theaters first, because that is going to be the first source of income for the producer themselves. That's an extra income apart from the OTT sale. Now, in this scenario, OTT has given, say, 20% of this one crore, 20 lakh rupees has advanced to the producers of Bahubali and they have promised to pay a balance value of 80 lakh rupees say five months from the release of the movie itself now that is making a total of waiting period of six months which is five months for the payment from release and release is one month from today so in total waiting period is six months now the producer understands that they will definitely get a value of 80 lakh rupees but there is a waiting period and production houses, producers are businesses. Any business would prefer having cash, better cash flow. In general terms of money, time value of money, I prefer to receive maybe 95,000 rupees today rather than receiving 1 lakh rupees after one year period of time. Because that's the time value of money. And production houses prefer, also because being business, they prefer having the cash earlier. They don't want to wait for a period of six months. One is the time value. Second, what would be the benefit of them having the funds immediately rather than waiting for six months? Now, in this scenario, in movie industry, what happens is actors, movie actors or directors or music directors, they have to be booked in advance itself. Say maybe the shooting will start after six months, but they have to book the calendars of these particular actors for which they have to pay advances. But they want to start a new project immediately because again, it's time value of money. They don't want to wait to get that 80 lakh rupees and then start a new project because in that next six months of period, they would have actually used this 80 lakh rupees, completed a budget and made another profit of 80 lakh rupees. So in general terms of finance, which is the time value of money, these production houses prefer, most of them prefer having that cash value, which is going to come in the future. They are better off receiving the same value today itself. Now, they know there is a waiting period and they know that there is going to be a requirement. They want the funds immediately. This is where better invest actually comes into the picture. The production houses in South also, they understand that they realize there is a company called Better Invest and we do the discounting of uh, contracts in the movie business. So they would come up to us asking for funds against their fixed future cash flow of 80 lakh rupees coming 
from a multinational company, a major player like Netflix, which is a listed company. Now, this is an opportunity where we can actually discount the contract value or the invoice value that they will receive after six months. Say, for instance, because the producer has come up to us with the value of 80 lakh rupees is the requirement, and that's the value that they will receive after six months from Netflix. First, we will check the contracts, existence of these contracts, if they have received the 20 lakh rupees at once by checking the GST invoices. We'll also check if this sale agreement is actually an outright sale agreement or not. Once we check this agreement, it is definitely valid and it is in existence. We throw an offer to the production house, say a value of 70 lakh rupees that we are ready to give them. Uh, just for example numbers, I'm just using this round numbers to make it easier for understanding. So we are offering an amount of 70 lakh rupees to the production house on a condition that we would require 10 percentage interest on the 70 lakhs, which is going to be 7 lakhs. This is an extra fund that we require of giving the services of funding them earlier for the waiting period of six months. Now, say the producer is okay because they're okay to lose the 7 lakhs in the next seven months, six months, but they know they're going to use better use this money of 70 lakh rupees. If they would like to do that, then they will agree, we'll go into the legal We'll make them sign some legal agreements, which Sethu will talk in the next session. After this is done, we will create a mechanism that after six months, we actually don't want to be dependent on the producer to give us back this value of 80 lakh rupees because the money is going to actually flow from Netflix, go to the producer, and then come back to the investors who have given the 70 lakh rupees. That's what we promise or offer to give to the producer. So we create a mechanism where Netflix pays the investors directly to an account which is accessed by us and it is only kept for the purpose for paying out to investors. So we remove the dependency on the producer entirely. We create this mechanism. What this mechanism is, again, Sedu will talk about this in the next session or next part of this particular webinar. So after six months, we are going to get this 80 lakh rupees directly from Netflix. So day one, producer has reached out to us. 80 lakh rupees is the fixed value. We give them 70 lakh rupees with the condition of 10%. We give the money today uh, as investors. We give the money today. And then after six months, the money of 80 lakh rupees comes from Netflix to an account. From that account, we take 77 lakh rupees, which is the promised 10% interest on 70 lakh rupees and give the 77 lakh rupees principal and interest back to the investors who have funded this particular contract or discounted this contract on day one of the ask of the producer. The balance 3 lakh rupees is there, say better investor has taken our charges as 1 lakh rupees and the balance of 2 lakh rupees gets transferred to the production house. So here we are just discounting the fu fixed future cash flow of a production house. This is a contract discounting. Yes, there will be an invoice that will get raised by the production house towards OTT towards the end of the tenure to receive the balance 80 lakh rupees because that's the system of receiving funds. Uh, they have to have GST invoices, records to raise an invoice, get a payment. But however, in the very beginning stage, we have already discounted the contract itself because that is the proof of existence for the transaction that has actually occurred between the OTT and the production house as a proof of transaction for the license of that particular movie, Ahubali 3, sold from the producer to Netflix. So this is the way in which we are discounting the movie contracts. This is not at all dependent on the performance of the movie. This is fixed future cash flow coming in. So say we are offering an interest rate of say 15% on a particular team. You make 15%. There's nothing more or there's nothing less. Even if the movie is performing 10x better or it's falling down, the performance is down. Still, yes, investors, we have given 70 and we know we are going to receive 77 back. So that is how the product works. I hope this brings a little clarity and a lot of confusion is cleared of exactly why we are financing a particular movie. As investors, we are just giving funds to producers against a future receivable, the invoice future receivable that they have, which has a fixed value, does not fluctuate at all. So I will now have the session uh, move to uh, Sedu, where he will discuss exactly what are the risk of investments, what kind of risk would be there, what is the documentation, how we actually curate the opportunity. From the time the production house has come asking for funds to better invest, now there's a set of due diligence, a lot of things that we have to do. We cannot just blindly take opportunity to put it on the platform. So 
there's a responsibility that we have as a platform to do the discounting. What are the legal processes we go through? What are the documentations we take? What is the mechanism we create so that we don't have a dependency back to the producer to get the funds? So all this will be explained by Sedu and also we will go to, to see what are the opportunities that we have listed and what are the repayments that's coming up. And also what is the next opportunity that's coming on the platform? So uh, Sedu, uh, next okay. to you. Sedu, before, before you begin, I think because uh, Parman covered quite a few data points on one slide, just to make yes. it easy as a quick re recap so that you know the audience doesn't lose track of what we've spoken. Could you please go back to the previous slide? Okay. So what we've covered so far, and correct me if I'm wrong, we've covered that Better Invest is a discounting platform. What you'll go about discounting is contracts. You all don't go about uh, financing movies. Correct. You only go about discounting contracts where there is an outright sale of a contract, which means there is already a fixed income that is paid out right to the studio. In this case, the a production house is nothing but a studio house or whatever is producing the movie, right? And you would go about only funding uh, these uh, uh, production houses on a fixed contractual rate. There is no profits on the upsides or downsides of the movies. Irrespective of how the movie does, your funding is already protected because your funding against a contract, outright contractual movie as against something that is going to be depending on how the uh, uh, success of the movie is dependent on. Uh, this is everything that we've covered so far. Our investment horizons could be anywhere between a month to nine months, depending on how large the uh, funding amount. Give me a second. Let me mute everybody here. Sorry. So the tenure could be anywhere between one month to nine months, depending on uh, the ticket size or the funding or the contract size that we are invoicing. Did we miss out anything on these on this slide that we've uh, captured so far? I think that pretty much uh, covers everything. So as you mentioned that the, the tenure is higher, it's nine months or so. That depends on the quantum of the contract value. Say the quantum is right. 20 crores and because movies are sold at even value of 50 crores or 100 crores. So for mm -hmm. a company like Net, even like Netflix, for them to pay that value, it might take up to seven months, eight months, nine months. So that happens as well in the industry. Understood. And the interest for, so just to recap, even though we have different forms of incomes that a production house has, which is theater income, digital rights, music rights, and satellite rights, y'all are predominantly right now funding the OTT rights, which is nothing but the digital rights from platforms such as Netflix, uh, Prime, Disney Hotstar, which are right now with y'all. And you're looking at adding on more such platforms as and when things contractualize uh, in a favorable arrangement for both of y'all. Yes. yes, Sharad. Correct. Beautiful. All right. So let's let's uh, proceed. Thank you. Cool. So is there any risk on the, on this particular investment product? As pretty much uh, there are few other risks which Harman already has covered. So I will cover one by one what are the risks involved in this particular investment product and how we are mitigating those risks in the next few slides. As you has Harman has told whether uh, this uh, particular returns is mapped to the performance of the movie, whether the returns go up when the movie performs better in the box office, or if the movie is a super flop in the box office, whether my returns go down. That's it. That one question might have popped up on the mind of minds of all of you once we started this webinar. And number two is the repayment risk, whether uh, a producer, after receiving the payment from the OTT, whether he will repay this particular money back to the investors. Is that, is that risk is available in this particular product and how we are mitigating the risk is we'll, we'll, we'll cover in the later slides. And then the delay risk. Delay, again, there is some chance of a movie getting delayed, post-production getting delayed by a month or two, movie release getting postponed by a month or two. There is a chance, again, for the delay to happen. And I will explain how we are mitigating the delay risk also. Now, coming to the performance risk, as Harman would have explained, uh, there are two kinds of contracts in the market. One is the outright sale contract, another is the revenue share basis contracts. So whenever an OTT purchases a movie, let's say they are going for a revenue share contract, they share the revenue with the production house based on the views of that particular movie is getting on their platform. Let's say you would have seen your note, you have seen in the OTT platforms, there is a separate uh, category of pay-per-view model where you have to pay for that particular movie and watch that movie. So based on that views, they will be sharing the revenue with the production house. And then there is an outright sale agreement where a buyer, buyer here can be an OTT, where they agree to pay a fixed value to, a, to that particular production house to purchase that particular movie. So here in this case, 
even if the ott is getting more views or less views ott is liable to pay that fixed value even if the movie is performing very good in box office in theaters or not not i mean performing very well in box office they will still pay that fixed money to the production house here so we are dealing only with the outright contracts that have been happening in the market and we are in working with these arunesh contracts that have been happening in market so in this case again uh, irrespective of the performance of the movie we are going to get that fixed value from the ott buyer here now moving on to the next part which is the repayment risk so coming to this repayment risk what we do whenever we list a opportunity we create a escrow account for that particular opportunity Uh, where we also collect a direct collection letter from the buyer this direct collection letter is again is nothing but a endorsement letter from the ott like netflix saying that they will be paying the remaining tranches that have to be come to the production house to this particular escrow account directly so this direct collection letter is a tri party agreement between production house better invest and ott where ott giving us an endorsement saying that they will make the payment to that particular escrow account that particular escrow account will be mentioned in that particular direct collection letter so it is like we are getting the collection rights of the money that is going to come from the netflix or the ott here so here again we are not dependent on the production house we are getting the money directly from the ott through an escrow account and it is again paid to the investors back from the escrow account now comes the delay risk so again uh, is there any chance of the movie getting delayed what are the chances of a movie getting delayed i will give you a couple of examples here one let's say a producer is targeting to release the movie on october 1st week let's say october 7th the same day a big movie like jawan is getting released uh, and what what so reasons what the producer will do he will look to postpone the movie by a week or two or even a month to generate better returns in the theater now the movie has been postponed by a month in later theatrical release again the same will happen in the ott release also the movie will be postponed by a month and payment also will be coming delayed from the ott in this case so in this case what we do we typically fund only 60 to 75 percentage of the contract value to the production house let's say there is a contract for netflix where they have purchased a movie for 10 cr and producer is coming up coming up coming us coming to us with a contract value of 10 cr what we do we typically fund only 6 to 7.5 cr to, to that particular production house and we take that remaining 30 to 20 to 35 percentage of that particular contract value as a cash coverage so that in the event of delay which is happening due to any unforeseen events like any any weather conditions the movie might get postponed by a week or any uh, particular uh, strategic decision to postpone the movie that we delay of a week or two if in case that is happening we will have a sufficient cash coverage in place where the interest will be still accumulated for the delayed period for the investors here so since we have a, have that interest coverage factor included in this particular product Uh, for all the opportunities uh, we have this cash coverage listed on the platform also when when you once you enter our platform uh, if you can check the opportunity page you can see how many months cash coverage we have in place for that even in case of a delay is happening so again there might be another chance where a delay might happen uh, let's say a uh, movie is in post production stage and uh, uh, there is some uh, uh, uncertain events happening uh, like uh, the actor is not feeling well and he needs to do the dubbing part where it it might take a week or two delay for completing that particular particular dubbing part again the movie release might be postponed by a delay or delayed by a week or two even in this case as we have sufficient cash, cash coverage in place the interest will be still accumulated for the delayed period also so in this way since we have a cash cushion always in place for all the opportunities we we have a sufficient uh, uh, cash coverage for the delay even in case a case of delay we will cover that uh, interest for that particular period in the next slide i will explain how we are curating the opportunities before we list it listing it on the platform and how we how what are the due diligence we do before we listing it on the platform so we have a five level evaluation framework in place uh, will i'll explain one by one here number one is the onboarding part where we onboard only movies that have been sold to rights buyer so without any underlying sold outright contract in place we never onboard any particular project to our platform this is the number one step then we will move on to the evaluation part so coming to this evaluation part we categorize movies into two you know indian indian cinema is an actor driven industry and the market value is defined by the actors market value here now coming we can categorize this indian cinema into two a big star movies and small and mid size stars movies now when it comes to small and mid size stars movies 
ఓటీటీస్ పర్చేస్ దిస్ మూవీస్ ఇన్ ది లాస్ట్ స్టేజెస్ ఆఫ్ షూట్ ఆర్ పోస్ట్ ప్రొడక్షన్ ఆర్ ప్రీ రిలీజ్ ప్రీ థియేటర్ రిలీజ్ సో దిస్ ఇస్ వెన్ ఓటీటీస్ విల్ గో అండ్ ఎంటర్ ఇన్ అండ్ దే విల్ పర్చేస్ ద పర్టికులర్ కంటెంట్ ఫ్రమ్ ది ప్రొడక్షన్ హౌస్ బట్ వెన్ ఇట్ కమ్స్ టు బిగ్ స్టార్ మూవీ ఓటీటీ విల్ గివ్ అన్ అడ్వాన్స్ అండ్ పర్చేస్ ద మూవీ ఈవెన్ బిఫోర్ ద షూటింగ్ గెట్స్ కమన్స్ లెట్స్ ఏ దర్ ఇస్ రజనీకాంత్ మూవీ దర్ ఇస్ హ్యాపనింగ్ Uh, the shooting is shooting is uh, i mean the movie is confirmed the shooting is going to commence from the month of november before the shooting gets commence our uh, ott will look to purchase that particular content to get in their library so they want that content exclusively for them for their viewers also so for this big star these otts go behind the production house they block and purchase the movies even before the shooting gets commenced in our case the stage and where we onboard these particular movies is like if it is a small or mid size stars movies we wait till the movie is completed and the movie is ready for theatrical release then we onboard that particular movie if it is a big star movie we wait again we wait till a 50 percentage of shoot has been done and then we onboard particular on that particular movie later we also check the track record of the production house track record of the cast and crew whether they have the capability of completing the movie on time or not their past record is also there we are we check on we work with certain production big production houses who have uh, multiple movies in their roadmap the reason behind this is like uh, whenever any uncertain event like the payment is not coming from ott obviously our recoup is like production houses liable to pay the investors here the, the reason why we are working with production houses who do multiple movies is like we also have a legal claim over their future receivables of the other movies that are in their roadmap so we are not only uh, take a securitizing this particular cash flow in case of recoup mechanism when it comes in place we also take a lien over their future cash flows of their other particular movie they have project a b c that project a b c will have other rights like satellite rights audio rights theatrical rights overseas rights where we have a claim over it that is that is why the reason we are working with production houses who have multiple movies at a time and at the last we also check the other rights that have been sold for the particular movie let's say for an example we are having an ott contract in our place we check whether that producer has sold audio rights of that particular movie satellite rights of that particular movie theatrical rights of that particular movie and overseas rights of the particular movie because before selling all these rights the producer will not release the movie on theaters because they don't want to get the value of the particular rights to be affected based on the performance of the theater what they will do they will they will wait till all these rights getting sold and then they will release the movie in the theater so we check whether all other link agreements are there in place they have sold out all other rights so that the movie is ready for theatrical release and there is no delay such to happen in this case so this is this 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 are the pretty much steps we covered in this evaluation part and then we move on to the discounting eligibility part as i told we typically fund only 60 to 70 percentage of the contract value to the production house here uh, let's say the contract value is 10 cr we fund only 6 to 7 cr and we take this uh, 30 to 40 percentage as a cash coverage so that in case of in, in the event of delays happening in that particular project we have a sufficient cash cushion in place where we can cover the interest for that particular delay period also now coming to the tenure uh, tenure ranges between 1 to 12 months as i told um, if it is a, a last last stage movie if, if we are onboarding just before the theatrical release the tenure will be ranging between 1 to 6 months if it is a, again other if it is at a shoot if it is the shoot has been completed 75% and the movie has to has 2 3 months of shoot to the shoot to be done and then later post production and then later theatrical release and ott release will happen where the tenure will be range between 6 to 12 months here so this comes the discounting eligibility part and next comes the verification part assignment contract with the rights buyer is nothing but a contract between the ott and the production house we will check the contract between the ott and the production house what are the deliverables that production house has to do go give to the ott here and what are the timelines the ott has in place for the making the payments for the deliverables this is something we verify before we onboard any such opportunities we also check the proof of advance received from the ott to the production house and we also check the all transaction history between the production house and the ott here we also check the dst records uh, thorough due diligence is done at this at this stage then we move on to the security documents so as i told we collect a direct collection letter from the buyer direct collection letter is something but uh, endorsement letter from the buyer like netflix giving us a letter saying that they will pay the remaining tranches or they will pay the Uh, the money that has to come to be come to the production house to the to the particular escrow account that is created for this particular opportunity and apart from the direct collection letter we do collect post dated check indemnity bond and personal guarantee signed by the production house 
as a part of our recoup mechanism since even in case a product payment is not coming from ott the production house is liable to make this particular payment so these are the file level evaluation framework we have in place and uh, once we once a particular project is crossing all these evaluation framework then only we will be listing that particular opportunity on the platform now moving to sedu one second one second this yes. now yes. what you're going to be covering now is from what i understand is going to be everything all the good work that has been done by better invest as a platform correct correct we have a few questions on the framework and the you know everything else that you'll do from a revenue stand i want to know right now setu how large is a uh, better invest team uh, you did introduce us to the management uh, of the founders of the company at the mm -hmm. moment what 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 is the employee strength because from what you're saying if you'll have to do this on a regular basis for each of the production houses and each of the movies right. of those respective production houses it right. is going to involve time effort and uh, money so uh, how how do you all plan to do this on a regular basis what are the times that you all will probably cut a little slack for the folks that you all are raising the invoice because uh, quite frankly it seems to be a it seems to be a daunting process to have this covered for each and every movie that you all are going to be discounting i'd like to know uh, i mean i'm asking this question See again, I'm playing devil's advocate here, Sethu. So while I'm going to be moderating the session, my entire uh, agenda here is to go about asking questions which my audience may sure. may not want to ask. But uh, it is important that we get a thorough understanding about this. Sure, 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 Sharad. So we we have a team of twenty five members in, inside our team, and we have a uh, a separate asset evaluation team where a risk evaluation team will be taking care of all this documentation process all this due diligence due diligence process and there is an asset origination team in place where they they are in touch with the production houses to get the other relevant documentations in place so before we list the opportunity on the platform uh, this risk evaluation team and asset origination team will be working closely with the production houses to do all this due diligence and curation things in place and then they bring it to the table of the investment platform from there again we have our own uh, marketing team sales team relation investor relations team that is there and operations team is there and they will be taking care of all the uh, listing uh, investment process and investment documentations like what are the documentations involved in, in involved for the investors there is a discounting agreement involved for the investors that are all taken care for by the operations and the finance team here Got sales it. and marketing team also so to so, again uh, yeah please please share. no, no pl uh, please continue I'll, I'll, i'll ask the question after you done right so uh, myself and pradeep as i told uh, we were in the other side of the coin before we starting this better invest bala like i told we have we have been in this business for 10 years uh, so uh, being in this ott business we know we how this ott payment structure works what are the checks to be done from a production house side uh, whether to work with the particular particular production house or not what are the checks we have in place is what i covered uh, just before now so uh, these are the evaluation frameworks we uh, we started uh, i mean creating from our own experience of working with production house from an ott perspective and we know what other perspectives has to be covered from a financing perspective also like whether the particular uh, production house has a negative financing that has been having in their place or whether they have cleared that financing is there any other financing that they have done for this particular project is all these checks will be done by us from our side and after, as i told this uh, particular contract which is being discounted for us since we are getting that direct collection letter or the endorsement letter from the netflix here again uh, the same thing cannot be pledged from elsewhere anywhere else else also apart from better invest so th this this is how we have covered the security part of this particular project and we have covered this curation uh, evaluation part of this particular uh, asset class so what you're saying here is say to mm -hmm. like bankers have a credit evaluation team you all have a finance team or a credit or you know an evaluation team That's that evaluation. goes about doing all these uh, file level framework before mm -hmm. that is even presented on your website correct now if there are investors who would like to see uh, do you all keep these documents available from mm -hmm. studio houses uh, to see that these kind of work is is this available for investor to take a, take a look at right we can we can uh, transparently show it to the investors if in case case of request basis but there is a agreement named discounting agreement where the investors will be signing before uh, uh, making the investment the discounting agreement is the core or major agreement which is a kind of a link agreement which covers all the let's say i told about assignment contract which is an agreement between the ott and the production house that agreement terms is that agreement is included in the discounting agreement and the escrow agreement which i talked about for that particular opportunity that also is included in this discounting agreement and all other 
in, 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 in other classes and uh, rights between the investors and the production house is also included in this particular discounting agreement. And in the discount agreement, we'll, we'll also cover what are the security documents we are collecting from the producer, what are the security documents we are collecting from the buyer that is also mentioned in the particular discounting agreement. Understood. So what you're saying is if a particular investor decides to lend money to a studio house, mm. through whatever opportunities is available on the platform, mm. each of these will be for each of these uh, 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 lending arrangements, you all will have this discounting uh, agreement, which is unique for that particular opportunity. Okay. And okay. before they sign that up, uh, before they fund that money, they can go about reading through these documents, look at okay. all of these pay up, uh, clauses that are added, and then upon successful evaluation, whether they can go about investing or not. That's the okay. uh, transparency that you're offering to the audience. Correct, yes. Even the interest coverage is also mentioned in the opportunity page. How many months we have the interest coverage for is also mentioned in the opportunity page. Also, exactly. I just like to add, Sarah, to that uh, on the discounting okay. agreement, the name of the production house, the name of the OTT, the name of the movie itself for which this discounting is happening is also mentioned in the agreement. Very nice. Okay. I have about 11 questions in the chat box. I'm not going to take them just as yet because I know these are things that we can cover towards the very end without having the flow disrupted. But now we've covered two aspects. One is uh, what are the challenges in the movie industry? Two, what side of fund, uh, uh, what sort of contracts you all are going to be discounting? How you all evaluate each of these contracts? And now you all are going to be talking about uh, the good work that has been done over the last uh, how many ever months? So yes, please continue, right. Uh, Sidhu. Right, thanks, Shadow. So as I told, we started listing opportunities from the month of December and uh, this slide pretty much sums up the track record or the traction we have been gaining so far. We have 49,000 plus registered users and we have investors investing across the country. And as you are, as you can see, 47 percentage of the investors have invested in more than one opportunity in our platform. And the average ticket size of the investor is 4.2 lakhs, where the minimum ticket size is 50,000 and 1 lakh in this in our case. So these are the recent opportunities which we listed on the platform. And as you can see the numbers, we have enabled close to 100 CR uh, worth of deals to the investors and 2,100 uh, invest unique investors have participated in these 70 deals. We have totally listed 70 deals on the platform so far. To talk about these recent deals, again, Maviran is a big star uh, movie which we listed on the platform uh, we, a couple of weeks before the theatrical release. It released on theater on time. Uh, it, it it has released on Amazon Prime on time 30 days from the theatrical release and Amazon Prime payment has also been uh, transferred back to the investors in this case. Uh, Japan is again a big star movie which is getting released on uh, Diwali. Uh, this is again a bigger deal uh, which, which where the, some overall value of the deal is 10 CR. Mahavirin is again a 10.5 CR deal uh, where the Japan is set to release on Diwali and the payments are set to happen after the month of Diwali. That's a Telugu movie, uh, again a big star movie, which we listed in the month of February. Uh, this it is a deal value is nine CR, uh, where the payment from Netflix have been coming for say, coming in six six to eight tranches for this particular opportunity. So we have listed various opportunities. We started with Tamil, slowly we expanded to Telugu industry. You know we are slowly expanding to other regional languages as we speak. So we have we now have contracts from. Malayalam industry, Kannada industry, Marathi, Bengali, and Hindi on our table. We are evaluating the contracts. We are understanding that market and slowly we will be moving on to the other regional languages also. And to talk okay. about... Our... Yes, Sharad. No, no, please continue. Please continue. Okay. So to talk about our investment opportunities, we have listed investment opportunities with various tenues. As I explained in the previous slide, there are investment opportunities with short tenues like one to three months uh, four to six months and there are uh, there are tenures for longer tenure also like six to 12 months opportunities also, also available on the platform and as i told there are various rights players like ott rights audio rights and satellite rights and ott 90 percentage of the deals are from ott rights and uh, there are a few other deals which we did with audio rights and satellite rights also and when it comes to types of content we 90 percentage of the content we discounted is are the movies and there are other web series also which we are discounting and there are also independent albums we discounted in our platform Got it. Okay, so all of this is good, Setu, but uh, let's uh, let's look at both sides of the equation. This is mm -hmm. nice numbers that you're saying. How many mm -hmm. movies or how many investments have gone bust? How many investments have got defaulted? Or So that's essentially the same question. And how many such deals have gone, uh, have gone defaulted or delayed? So right. defaulted is one and delayed is another one. Yes. Right. So I have the numbers with me. So here, I, I, as you can see, 
uh, we have done close to 100 CR transactions, which I told, and out of which uh, roughly 27 C CR has been transferred back to the investors. The repayment has been transferred back to the investors. And uh, yeah. more than 60 percentage has been reinvesting after they're getting the returns. They have been reinvesting in our platform as we speak. And the average returns mm -hmm. they are earning through our platform is 17.8 per annum. And there has been zero default percentage. And when it comes to delay, out of 70 deals, three delays, the payment has been delayed. Uh, I'll go one by one. The first case is with the uh, Z contract, or the movie named IoT, which is a Z5 contract. Uh, since the Z is in merging process with Sony, the payment has been delayed from Z side. Uh, the payment is set to happen in the month of uh, July, which was delayed. And again, now Z is paying in four tranches. It was one single payment which they have to pay. And now the payment is coming in four tranches, out of which two tranches has been paid by Z and next two tranches are set to happen in this month and next month. So this is again because of that merger process that has been delayed. Number two, again, the case is with the, again, another another, another counterparty or the payment is set to happen on September 15th. Again, it is delayed by 15 days. It is coming on September 30 here. And for the other opportunity, the delivery content delivery has been delayed to the counterparty where it is a web series. Again, where out of eight episodes, four episodes have been delivered and the other four episodes will be delivered in the next 15 days time. Again, the payment is delayed by a month in month time here because once the content is delivered, they were, again, the buyer has 30 days time to pay that money. So these three deals are where the delays have been happening uh, in our in our case, uh, you know, in the overall 70 deals we have listed so far. Again, uh, uh, what we have done from here, like we from this thing, there are few uh, counterparties we, that have went into our negative list since because of the other process happening in their side. Again, we, we, we foresee that it might be delayed, but that may be happening. So we have, consciously, we have been avoiding that particular contract from that particular counterparties after this deal has been uh, happening. So these delay percentage or delay deals that actually happened, were they uh, towards the start mm -hmm. of your... Uh... Uh, towards the start of your tenure in doing business or they were towards the end or midway through the project. I'm asking this because um, while mm. you have covered the file level framework, obviously mm. the reasons why you've mentioned in terms of these delays that happened is not covered. I mean, you all couldn't foresee this. So my point is, Correct. if this has happened midway through your journey, how are you all ensuring mm. that this doesn't continue? Because yes, clearly there are controllables that, are, that we can foresee and there are controllables that can go completely out of whack for whatever reasons. So Correct. how are we, how is better invest protecting or safeguarding the investments made? Correct. So these these three opportunities which we listed are on the starting of our journey, investment journey, like with the platform. And as, as I told, we started listing from December. These are the opportunities which, which we listed in the month of January and February for which the delay has been happening on this. Uh, as I told, the Z5 case is again a very, uh, that is something we, we, we didn't foresee because of the merger, the payment got delayed. Uh, there is something from there. Again, I went to a negative list from there. We, we haven't onboarded any such opportunities with that particular counterparty in place. And when, whenever it comes to an early stage shooting is in process, we started mandating insurance here. Again, uh, as I told about Big Star movies where we onboard if the 50, 50 to 60% of shoot is completed, we have mandated an insurance where production has to, has to mandate, has to take an insurance for the project abandonment. Even in case of project is getting abandoned, uh, there will be insurance cover where better investors will also be a party in that particular insurance where we can get a claim over and we'll give it back to the investors here. So these so are one the... second, one second, uh, Sethi, you're bringing an important point. So Correct. you're saying for whatever reason, if the movie doesn't get launched, Correct. which means abandoned for whatever reasons, right? Uh, 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 it could be a case of like what happened with Kerala story or, you know, if it's controversial, Correct. You're saying that if the movie doesn't get, you'll have an insurance coverage from the studio house such right. that if the instance were to happen when the claim is proceed, you also be a party to that claim. Correct. This is only okay. for the movies that are under shoot. Once the movie shoot is completed, there is no control over it. And we also take up the, the, the I mean, as I told, there are other avenues we where we look into whether in a religious perspective, whether in a legal perspective, is there any... Uh, such legal cases are bound to happen for that particular project is what we see in the script level. But apart mm -hmm. from that, when it comes to a shooting shooting level, if the project gets abandoned due to any uncertain event that is happening for the key cast and crew for this, this particular project, uh, in it due to maybe due to other certain reasons, if the project is getting abandoned or shelved, uh, there is again uh, insurance is in, is in, in place uh, where we be a party uh, for, to claim the particular money from that insurance. Okay, excellent. So for all the for all the points that uh, you have had and uh, you have had a delay 
okay mm -hmm. did the returns come down for the customers or uh, uh, for the investors or what's happened in that case in in all the three cases the returns have been coming in, coming in part payments it was a single bullet repayment where as i told z is making main ma change into four tranche payment they are making part payments every month let's say the deal so, value is 3 crs now the 3 cr has been uh, converted into a four tranche uh, each month the uh, payment has been coming from the counterparties and so uh, my... the interest also is paid uh, along with that charge the interest delayed interest is also paid along with that so what is what i'm facing as an investor is a delayed payment but my irr still is in, intact correct correct all right great uh, anything else that you need to because uh, interesting we've got about 21 uh, questions in the chat box and so we are already at 1 hour down what what other uh, uh, slides do you have to share with us uh? so i'll quickly uh, rush through the slides uh, uh, sharad so this these is are your production houses okay this is all right. production houses we have onboarded so far on the platform mm -hmm. And to come in, coming in the perspective of diversification, investors get to choose which production houses they want to. Uh, we'll, we'll touch that towards the end. We'll touch that towards sure, the end. Sure. Done, uh -huh. done. These are the audio labels and OTD labels uh, we have uh, onboarded so far. And uh, these are the recent repayments which have been happening in, in, through our platform. Mahavir and Asi told, Dasara again, I told Netflix, Talikud and Netflix again, a six tranche payment which has been transferred back to the investors. And Run Baby Run is a hot star and satellite rights from Star Group, which the payment has been done on time. Thunder T has a prime, a prime contract. And Rangapal is a four tranche uh, payment where the two tranches has been paid on time. Other two tranches have been set to happen. Excellent. Right. All so, right. Let's, 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 let's talk about this because I, I'll leave the audience to participate whenever they want to participate. I don't want that to be. So uh, would you mind stopping, uh, stopping the screen share on this? Uh, uh, sure. Uh, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I see quite a lot of questions coming on the chat box. And first of all, uh, uh, Setu and uh, Parman, I'm glad that you all could walk through us. I mean, walk us through such uh, complicated data points in a while as boring as it sounds, but it's important that we know. And you know, I see there is quite a few questions coming in. I'll take them one uh, one at a time. And if I yeah. see them more more so repeated, I will have this covered. But before I even get there. Kavita, you raised your hand. Uh, do you want to uh, unmute your line and ask the question, please? Yes, sure. Uh, so very quickly. So I understood the delay in case of um, uh, the 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 situation where there was a merger between Z and Sony, right? And uh, it was not clear what was the reason for delay in the remaining two. Uh, I, I don't want to get into specifics of these individual things. I just want to know what, by and large, what kind of reasons are there for these delays? Right. So, as I told, yeah, Harman, would you like to pick or shall I answer? No, it's okay. Anything is fine. Cool. Okay. So, as I told, the delay might happen if the movie producer is planning to postpone the movie for any sort any any strategic reason, which I told, if any big movie is releasing, the producer might look to postpone the movie by a week or two. So, every payment of OTT is mapped to OTT release. OTT release is mapped to theatrical release. From theatrical release, 30 days from there, OTT has will release that particular content. From OTT release, 30 days, satellite TVs have their own timeline. So satellite TVs is wait for OTT to run through their 30 days and they want to release that particular content on their TV channels. So coming back high, everything is mapped to the theatrical release here. If any delay happens in theatrical release, again, everything else will be delayed. So theatrical release, Again, as I told, might get delayed in two, two, two ways. One is if the producer is looking to postpone that movie, number one. Number two, when uh, again, the number one example to give you, give you an idea, uh, this, this week, September 28, there are six movies which is getting released in Tamil Tamil industry. And, and since it is very much cramped, there are production houses who are looking to postpone that movie by a week. They are planning to move release it on October 7. Uh, since... Mm -hmm. Since the, 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 the since they are they couldn't be able to get the theaters for this for the particular movie good a good number of theaters number two again is is with the post production or the shooting it's say the shooting movie CG work or movie dubbing work is getting postponed or getting delayed by a week or two there will be movies where uh, where there will be uh, post production works like DI color correction dubbing and all these things will be happening. If there is a delay by a week or two, and then again, there will be delay in theatrical release. So only in these cases, a delay are bound to happen. When it comes to big star, there are only six to seven release slots for them. So for example, 
uh, when it comes to a big star they they will look to always look to uh, release the movie in a big festival time that is there is diwali there is christmas there is sankranti pongal and then there is tamil new year where they will be releasing the uh, particular movie and there is puja holidays like the uh, dasara and other uh, aidha puja saraswati puja which is there these are the slots where the big big actors will target to release their movie and if the target and the target release date is fixed they will work back work towards back and they will complete the all other process in time if the target if the particular slot is missed missed they will move to the next big slot let's say if the diwali is missed missed they will move to the christmas holiday where they will look to release that particular movie here again if it is happening if the delay is happening it will happen for a month or two this is how it works in this industry what a long answer for a simple question but looks like you're learning more about what has to be done in movie world as compared to just the market but kavita was that was that uh, question answered for you yes i think uh, that answers the question thank you beautiful awesome so uh, orvil asked uh, is this arrangement factoring as credit control has been taken by better editor or invoice discounting is being described as the product being offered okay orvil just to add to this i called it movie financing just to get your attention so that you'll register to the e- uh, webinar right if i call it invoice discounting then you'll say sharad how is this any different so uh, it is my fault i will change my marketing or copywriting skills but here's the thing we are not financing movies we are uh, uh, we are uh, uh, discounting the contracts that are already been purchased by ott platforms only right other than that there will be other uh, alternatives looked at in the future but so far what better invest as a platform is doing is that they are discounting movie contracts that have already been funded so your underlying risk or your collateral protection like how it was with giraffe where your invoice uh, where your collateral is the invoices given by uh, you know the supplier to the vendor and things of that sort here your underlying risk is protected by the ott's rights already been purchased uh, sorry the uh, uh, digital rights already been purchased by the ott platforms did that answer that question purvin yeah sharath i understood that yeah like the context is different uh, the underlying asset is different but yeah the the essence remains the same correct and why so now that you now that we are at this topic so why this discounting when compared to uh, you know when or, or what we are already doing in terms of invoice discounting i am very clear about if i don't know what i'm getting into i will diversify as much as i can it's nice like when you hear donald trump robert kiyosaki warren buffett saying concentrate 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 is great if i know what i'm getting into if it's my business i will only concentrate on my business but if i have to make my money work i will look for various opportunities where i can get the similar kind of returns or better but i need to understand what's my underlying risk and if i'm not in control i might as well dis- uh, diversify as much as i can diversify without overshooting the limit of how much money should get into a particular asset class good or good awesome so that that is taken what happens if the movie is not released at all i think kavita that is already answered via the insurance piece that is taken so very nice question there uh next question i have from madhu uh, says will these bollywood movies or only regional movies so uh, uh see i was going to i was i told you that right at the start uh, setu it looks like you're very uh, south indian focused but the uh, the uh, the an- short answer to that madhu is they are trying to focus on where their strengths energies and contacts are most best suited right now like for example i don't work with uh, families that are need to be told why they need a financial advisor right everybody needs to work with a unbiased financial uh, 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 advisor who can help them not make the mistakes that they would do without having to work with an advisor but when do they uh, value them most they value them most when they've gone about making a mistake therefore my strength is in working only with those families likewise better invest as a platform because of the founders past experience they have been having the contracts that, see while it might seem that this is a very easy business to get in you need to know the ins and out of the business so what happens in a, a, a bollywood industry when compared to a tamil industry or let's say a marathi industry is very very different the audience yeah. that they appeal to is very very different therefore instead of just spreading wide you spread very concentrated focus on what your strengths are and then slowly build till the time that you've garnered those skill sets Arman, say to if there is anything that you'd like to add to what I've missed out here, please. 
Correct, sir. So you have pretty much covered everything since we our uh, strength was lying in the southern in the southern regional languages. We started with southern languages. As I told, we are understanding the other markets as we go. And we all we have started started approaching the Bollywood production houses. We have been getting contracts from other regional languages also, which we want to take time and understand that particular particular market, and then we enter there. So last week we we listed a Hindi web series named Hajamat, which is again a counterpart is Jio Cinemas there. So we have been getting contracts all over, inbound contracts requests from all over. But we are taking our time. We are taking our slow steps to moving, expanding to the other regional languages. Because you bring this topic out now, Sethu. Generally, from a time that a contract is presented to you all, or you all scout in the market, from the time that opportunity comes to you all till the time you all actually go about funding it, what's the timeline that goes in before you actually finalize this? So it it again depends. It's a, it's not only with our side and production our side. There is also a counterparty involved here where we need to get the direct collection letter and all the other things is there. So oh. even the other process takes only 10, 15 days. The counterparty legal team will take some time. Let's say it, it may go to a week or two or even a three weeks is there. So it, it again depends on the other third party also, counterparty. whenever. So let, let's say that we are getting a direct collection letter from Netflix. It goes to the Netflix legal team. They will take their own waiting time and all the time. Then they will be coming back to us and giving the direct collection letter. So we're talking anywhere between neighborhood of a month and a half to about three months. If this is not an engagement that you'll have built very strong so that, you know, I mean, you'll get more priority before anything else coming in. Correct, correct. Okay, excellent. So that answers it. Uh, Urvil, I see you've raised your hand. Let me address all the other questions that are coming in the chat box and I'll definitely take that on. Uh, so Madhu, did, was I able to answer? Uh, were we able to answer the question for you? Yeah, Sharad. Awesome. Very nice. Great. Now that we've covered that, Vinayak, I think I'll, I love your question here, Vinayak. You say, how do you ensure movies have been sold? Uh, so Vinayak has burnt his hand in a couple of instruments that he's tried and therefore he's being very skeptical, which is a good thing because we need a diverse audience. So his question is, this is great, you're doing, but how do you ensure all of these details that has been shared to you is actually been vetted and you'll have generally done the work. So I, that is something I would want to uh, either Harman or Setu to go about answering. Right. So like like I said, uh, for all other opportunities, there is a counterparty who has to acknowledge for this particular opportunity. As I told in the direct collection letter, direct collection letter will also address the that particular contract between the production house and the that particular OTT there. Like when it comes to Netflix, Netflix will quote that particular agreement signed between the production house and Netflix on that particular date for that particular value. So yeah. just to, just to uh, interrupt, you're saying direct collection or the counterparty here is basically this legal entity that is going to go about talking about this agreement between the two parties, which here is the OTT platform and the production house. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. Please continue. Right. Right. There are other ways also for when it comes to Amazon Prime, we get to access of the portal where we will check the, whether that particular invoice has been raised, whether Amazon mm -hmm. has made that payment to this particular production house. Uh, we will mm -hmm. also check the statements of the production house. We also check the both the transaction history between the production house and the OTT. So in this case, we get to know that this particular assignment contract is, uh, has been done in place. And then only we, this is the first step where we, when we, what we do in the in stages of onboarding a particular contract to the platform, where we, we whether this particular contract is, uh, I mean, whether it's, it's an actual contract from the buyer or not. Understood. Vinayak, did that answer the question, uh, Vinayak? Yeah, yes, it did. Thank you. Very nice. Excellent. Awesome. So now that we, Vinayak, I'm not taking the rest of the questions because uh, again, uh, you know, I think we've covered it in terms of access of themes, uh, which is not only movies, but you're looking at other forms of entertainment that is documentary stories, uh, short stories. So all of that is things that the, the uh, platform is evaluating. But right now, bulk of their strength is only on movies and more so South Indian movies, right? Is the OTT buyers only, uh, sorry, is the OTT the only buyers you look for making an outright purchase? Uh, yes, I think that's the easiest way to deal with them because all the others, the payments may be a little delayed or it might take a little longer time. But from an assurance standpoint, from a certainty standpoint, the uh, uh, the payments coming in from the OTT platforms are most certain and most, uh, uh, how do I put this? It's most certain and more accurate when compared to all the other uh, 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 digital, sorry, all the other forms of rights that a movie gets. So that is that. Uh, Mahesh is asking, why should production houses rely on better invest? They can better plan their cash flows and pipelines of project. Uh, uh, so Mahesh, uh, you know, I think uh, this is a, a question that's coming in from, you know, we being 
uh, schooled at a very young age about being, uh, you know, debt free and the fact that, you know, hey, you know what, debt is bad, uh, you know, uh, make sure that you don't get into debt and all of that. Whole world, whole world, I mean, every dollar, rupee, kar, whichever way or pound in this case uh, is coming to existence by borrowing, which means the central bank of any country is going about printing money, right? There's nothing wrong about borrowing money as long as your borrowing is making money for you and not losing money, right? So in this case, production houses want to go about planning their schedule or their cash flows better. Unfortunately, the ecosystem is designed around where you don't get your monies at the instant that you want. Like for example, when you're paying me for financial advice, I charge it upfront. I don't have the time and bandwidth to follow through and say, okay, payment now, second payment, right? But if an industry goes with a six month, nine month, 10 month kind of a, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is this thing called? Uh, invoice clearing period. Then what do you do in that meanwhile? Because like Setu was mentioning, I think Harman was mentioning, uh, uh, you know, big stars need to be booked well in advance. Big musicians need to be booked well in advance. Where does that money come from? So instead of losing out on time, I'm better off uh, doing what? Uh, making sure that some portion of my money. Remember, it might seem 18%. So you're of the opinion that you're paying 18% per annum. That's not the case. You're paying 18% for every time or for every day that you have used the money. If you've got the money back and you're able to clear it, then you don't pay it for the rest of the year. You pay it only for however little time that you borrowed the money for. Now, why better invest as a platform? If you were to go and take this thing to the bankers, you will never get this because banks have got very strict Regulations around what they can fund and what they cannot fund with a certain size. Next goes the NBFC industry. Again, NBFCs don't understand the movie business like a platform does. Like what we did for last week or the last call that we did was for IPV, which was in startup investing. Why startup? Why IPV as a platform? Because they've got certain skill sets and you know uh, understanding of how this industry works, which makes them a better fit for us when compared to most other platforms. So was I able to answer the question for you, uh, Mahesh? Yes, thank you. Awesome, excellent. Uh, so that's taken care of. Is there some sort of opportunity rating the team does on da, 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 on credit evaluation? Not really, up, uh, Orville. That doesn't happen just as yet. And I'll tell you how we mitigate our risk towards the end. Okay, but good question again. Uh, obviously, it has to come from a risk analyst. So <laughs> with that said, uh, Amit is asking uh, who are BI's con uh, 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 competitors and. Uh, Okay, Amit Deshpande is asking how, who are these, uh, who are BI's competitors and how many contracts are we investing at a time? I'll take the second part of the question, Amit, because you bring it and, you know, I think it's a good time now. Like everything else that we are diversifying in, how we're going to be diversifying here on this platform, we are going to be ensuring that we don't put any investment active in the same production house, in the same language, or in the same, uh, uh, what's, uh, from the same uh, producers of the movie, right? So you have, like what we were doing with uh, Giraffe, we would make sure that they had diversified with different uh, 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 suppliers or different businesses. Some of them are in the e-commerce space, some of them are in the transformation, uh, transportation space, some of them are in other lines of businesses. So how are we going to ensure if we got, let's say five lakhs kept aside for allocating money here, I would not allocate all my money in the same tenure. I would split this into between two to three months, then a six month to nine month, you know, different tranches. Then from different studio houses, different, uh, you know, depending on who the actors are, all of this, which allows me to diversify my risk. All right. So that is the second part of the question. Thanks, Amit. I'm glad that you're sharing the video and I'm able to see your reaction. Uh, uh, Setu and Harman, I, it doesn't sound, it doesn't, while I've done my research, but it doesn't sound nice that I answer this question. So I'll, uh, I'll let you all answer. Who are your competitors and why? Okay. First answer the question, then I'll tell you why. So that's the second part of it. I think I, as beginning of the call, I was saying that we are the first and the only company in India to be doing this. That's what we realized when we started this. And that's that's something that we already knew from the very beginning. And even till date, uh, I think it is safe to say that uh, the monopoly is there with us. Where we are the only players in the market who are doing this. Setu, you can correct me if there's something that has changed the last 24 hours if you got to know something new. Right. So as Harman, did, we, as, as Harman told, we are pioneering in this industry. We are the only players who are in this media and entertainment industry who are doing this uh, discounting uh, platform or discounting opportunities to the investors. Uh, and as I told, we do have plans to expand into other uh, avenues in this media and entertainment also where we look to uh, go in for. So as of now, we don't have any competitions in this space. That's good to know. Thanks, Setu. Uh, Amit, does that answer the question? Super. Thank you. 
Uh, Kirish Venkataraman is asking, uh, can we get specific experiences in the past 10 years where things did not go as well? And how did they handle the situation? So, Kirish, very quickly, uh, I'll take this since this has already been answered. Uh, 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 Better Invest as a platform has been in business for the last one year. Okay. Uh, Setu's past Setu and Pramod's past experience were on the other side of the table where they had a startup, they got that sold, waited for a little while, and then started a platform on the aggregator side of things, right? So there's no experience for the last 10 years, but after the, out of the 70 movies that they've gone, oh, sorry, 70 uh, opportunities that have been funded, three of them have been delayed and all the experiences have been shared uh, from a risk mitigation. All the five level risk framework in terms of what are the different risks is already covered there. Unless that is not clear, is there anything else you want me to address, Girish? Are you there? I think he's dropped off. Okay, anyway, so we'll address that. Uh, very important question. So this is coming from a project manager who is overlooking at a lot of money. So how much, how is BI making the money? What, sits, uh, what setbacks BI have seen so far in their journey? That is already covered. Why crowdsourcing by BI instead of other options? That is also covered because there's no alternatives now. Uh, what or what are we doing to safeguard if AI goes out of business? So that's a very important question. But before we get there for everybody else on this call, Setu and Harman, how does BI make the money? If you're not charging investors and you're giving 18% of the pad, how are you guys making money? And uh, uh, you know what are you doing to make sure that you'll sustain without having to be dependent on VC, angel, or no, you're not in the angel investing space. So VC funds or you know series B and all of those kind of uh, lack of better word vultures out there. So yeah. Right, so we charge a fee from production house. Uh, uh, as for the all deals, once we, when we onboard them, we charge a fee from production house. As I told, once the movie hits the escrow account, the first collection rights goes to the investors where uh, they get their returns and principal plus interest. Uh, then we take up our fee and then the remaining surplus or overflow will be transferred back to the production house in this case. So number one is the fee that we charge from production house. And number two, there is a minimal fee that we charge from investors, which is again, asset management fee. Uh, mm -hmm. that is there for investors that is again it's there for certain opportunities certain opportunities the fee is fully fee will not be there uh, but the the fee from the production house is what the major source of revenue is from okay so just a quick question now that you're charging a fee for certain opportunities mm -hmm. does the irr include uh is that inclusive of the charge or is it exclusive of the charge exclusive so ah, okay. I, with, the, with the example that I was giving and whenever I started saying that 80 lakh rupees and we're giving 77 lakhs back. So there was an excess of 3 lakhs. Out of that, we took 1 lakh rupees. So that's our charge. So what we promised 10% that has gone back to the investors. So that's fixed. We, our charges are not included in that. So in other words, if you show 18%, 18% is what a customer makes irrespective of whether there is charges, not charges. That's the end. That's the end of uh, return a customer ends up making on your platform. Yeah, there, there are few couple of deals which has an asset management fees for mm -hmm. every lakh, somewhere between uh, 0.3 to 0.5, that would be an asset management fees that we might charge. That depends on the tenure. So maybe if it's a 1 lakh rupees investment and the tenure is only one month repayment, then it might be at 20 rupees or 30 rupees, 35 rupees kind of asset management fees we charge. But the majority mm -hmm. it is at, at the production house level itself that uh, our interests are and that's where we uh, cover that from. So uh, y'all yeah. said y'all are going to be cash flow positive in uh, another by I think twenty twenty four. How is that happening? I mean, uh, uh, for a startup with the fact that y'all have so many uh, salaries to pay and things of that sort, the kind of work that goes in. How are y'all getting operationally cash flow positive? Uh, uh, Sharad, to uh, correct that answer, we are actually going a bit of positive in the next couple of months. I told the runway is till December twenty twenty four. Uh, ah, so okay. we are in the brink of going to an EBITDA positive in the next couple of months where once our AUM hits 100 CR mark. So we are 90, I mean, out of 100 CR that we have done as a GTB, 330 CR has been repaid back to the investors. And once our AUM hits 100 CR, we'll be going cash flow, for not uh, EBITDA positive. There will be accrued in, accrued revenue for us. As, as you know, there are, since it is a bullet repayment, the payment will be hitting our account also at the time of maturity. So the, in, in terms of accrued revenue, we will go a bit of positive in a couple of months. Understood. So what you're saying is, you all make a percentage of this money that is being given. So for calculation sake, let's say it's 1%, 100 crores, 1 crore, that is your current burn. And therefore, when you'll make 1 crore and above, that's when you'll become a bit of positive, unless you'll incur more other costs in terms of expansion and things of that sort. Is correct. that correct? 
correct all right correct amit was that uh, was that uh, clarified excellent uh, kavita is again ask, uh, asking if there is a delay will the additional interest be i think that is already considered uh, kavita what were the reasons for delays i think that you have already uh, checked mayur sinha is asking how difficult is it to get into a deal based on giraffe experience very difficult in dy so uh, mayur i think uh, uh, it's a, it's been a little while since we spoken uh, uh, all the challenges with the giraffe is taken care of we will talk to you about that with uh, 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 with the better invest because i have been on the platform slightly longer than you uh, than my audience is i have given the necessary feedback so uh, we can have the similar kind of arrangement in terms of blocking deals right up front right before we actually start parking money obviously because this is experimenting i would want none of my investors to park more than 1 lakh at least for the first 6 months till you see your money back and then redeploy and then eventually over a year we start looking at 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs and above depending on our risk appetite and the fact that our asset allocation is in place so uh, to answer your question in simple words uh, 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 mayu no there is no challenges in terms of having investments gotten for sure uh, say to harman if uh, you are not sure what this is happening in just terms of we getting deals because on the other platforms that we're looking at is uh, almost like you have to stand on a queue to go about getting it so after giving yeah. constant feedback to the manufacturers of the product they've taken a few suggestions from uh, contributing partners like us or channel partners like us which is ended up being a better experience for the investors so uh, that's the background to it uh, mayur if you're are you still on the call okay i'm not sure so uh nakul is asking is the invoice already raised with the payment only for 3 months or is it raised later uh who raises the invoices okay uh nakul just to add this very quickly this is all done right at the start before the movie is so picture you being a, a production house you have come to the ott platform which is me i being the ott platform have cut a check to you saying that okay here's the money, uh, here's the money that you will get but the balance of the money will come to you only after 6 months you have got the uh, you've got the contract that contract gets discounted with better invest and all of this is done at the start not at a later date for that particular tranche did that help nakul okay tell the uh, just so basically it's up front it's everything up front there's nothing that so uh, a particular production house may want to raise 3 crores 5 crores 10 crores whatever it is but they they could go in tranches and not all the money in one shot Depending okay. on which stage of the production is. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So that clarifies. Invoice discounting idea seems good, but what is the reason H and I is another investor is not directly involved? Uh, Kavita, it is not. It is definitely there with ultra H and I families. The difference is they put one followed by seven, eight, nine zeros, and we are getting it to put with one followed by five zeros. That's the only difference. Uh, the current ecosystem in the uh, in the financial world allows. uh you know investors like you and me to make micro investments when compared to one large investment being done in on the uh, in the instrument same story giraffe uh, liquid loans uh, ipv now better invest and a couple of others that i'm going to be introducing you all to it's just because of technology and our ecosystem otherwise this is not something that was new right banks would uh, 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 there would be uh, nbfcs that would go about funding what makes it easier for the production houses to reach out to better invest is because entire thing happens online and it's much more smoother instead of having to go door to door knocking and you know uh, having to have mindless meetings hours that goes in terms of cracking a deal so that is that harman say to anything that i have missed out here no i think uh, you are right on point sure uh, correct sure excellent super kavita it's always nice having you on a call like this because i think half the questions come from you and it makes the entire engagement that much more interesting so thank you for these uh, very critical questions uh, jaydeep is asking does our investment go to better investment as a platform or they okay uh, just to make it easier jaydeep since this is the first time that you're going to be considering investments in the alternative space you are never investing in the platform you are investing in the underlying asset but via a platform it's like you are investing in mutual funds not directly uh, while you're using nse as a platform you're not investing in the platform you are investing via the platform the platform allows you to have a seamless experience if you're doing the mutual funds with me then what you and i would have to do is sign a paper get your check and all of those different things investing it via the platform like nse allows you to have a smoother experience uh, for that experience in this case with nse you're just saving on time better invest as a platform you're getting exposure to another asset class which you you and i as retail investors would never get access to so your the intent of doing this is to get better 
to get nicer double digit post tax returns via another asset class which is not available for most folks all good yeah i mean what i was getting at is you know whether we as investors also need to do our own homework on the contracts or projects that we are interested in uh, investing money management money management has never been easy jdp more money we make more investments that we have to put so that is something else that i'm going to be covering towards the very end but because you asked this you have a choice i what i have done is i know the kind of due diligence they do whenever i see a movie when i see an opportunity i have invested in five opportunities so far right i don't get into the nitty gritty of this because that's not my line of work right that is my risk appetite that doesn't mean you should not be doing it right you can choose to do it right in my case i have done those same templates that i have given you the uh, uh, diversification between production houses language uh, whoever is producing the movie actors in it etc etc i don't understand the movie business and i don't think i want to get there i get a surface level understanding if a uh, if a platform if an agency if a firm is doing what they are supposed to be doing then more or less that's the kind of appetite that i have if that is not something that you have or don't have the bandwidth give it a pass that's the best thing because hey you know what mutual fund firby say here so that that's that but was i able to answer the question for you jerry awesome beautiful uh pravin asks what happens if the company better invest is not able to cope up and for some reasons unforeseen basically the long and short of the question uh, harman and setu is what if you guys shut down because at least if i'm doing bonds and ncds they are listed on the platform i can sell it via a dmat account but in your case you all are not regulated okay so there is no reason for you all i mean what's the what's the recoup if for some reason better invest shuts down right so as i told uh, investors will be signing a discounting agreement before they uh, make the investment the discounting agreement has gives has has a clauses saying that investors have the individual rights to claim that particular money so this discounting agreement is a tripartite agreement between production house investors and better investor better investor here acting as a facilitator here and it is an agreement between investors and the production house directly where investors have their independent rights to claim over that particular cash flow even without better invest in, in, investors have we have been defined as a, given a independent rights to investors where they can claim their cash flow from the production house in this case while that's a nice answer the trouble answer is that the fact that they'll have to go through the entire pain and inconvenience of figuring out which where do i write whom do i write to a uh, more or less writing to a government in terms of getting a answer back that's the truth uh, truth of the answer so yeah it's in this case as i told there is a escrow mechanism in place uh, where uh, whenever a money hit, hit, money is hitting that particular escrow account the escrow account or trustee acts on which uh, there is an underlying instructions for that escrow account where the underlying instruction says first collection rights of that particular money that is hitting that escrow account goes back to the investors along with their principal and interest right so in this case if the better investor is not there in the picture again the all the investor details investors account numbers everything is is there with production house also whenever they sign the discounting agreement and there is a production house who has to who is liable to make the payment to the investors and again it, it comes to the escrow account as the production house was was all is also wants to access that their overflow of the surplus that is available in the escrow account they have to go through the escrow process Well, they need to transfer it back to the investors, and then then only they can able to get their own chunk of money which is which is sitting in the escrow account. So what you're saying is, whether better invest is there or not, and if the production house wants to give or doesn't want to give, in order for them to access their money that is Correct. going to come from this agreement, first they have to make sure that the payments go out to their respective investors who funded this particular deal. Is is my understanding right? Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay, Praveen, does that answer the question for you, Praveen? Yes, Sharath. Yes. good question and thank you i think that is helpful for everybody on this call uh, uh mahesh is asking what is the fee the platform charge okay i think that is already answered so no problem <laughs> kevin is asking what is the tax uh kevin anything uh, that has a fixed income or fixed rate of return will always be charged as per the marginal taxation and marginal taxation simply means you are going to be taxed as per your tax land so if you are in the 30% tax bracket whatever so better invest as a platform will deduct 10% tds because they are liable to do that okay they are liable to deduct a 10% tds at the end of the year when you are filing your returns you have to pay the remainder 20% did that answer the question for you uh, uh, kevin kevin you that uh yes it did thanks already 
uh what else or will why 18% i see most of the products offer 18% is there a possibility of an upside <laughs> All right, I thought Urvil, being a risk guy, you would probably say, why, how come 18%, you know, isn't that too much? But no, uh, Kevin, uh, sorry, Urvil, 18%, I think is going to be the max. And I think they're not going to continue 18% for a long time, Kevin. All right, because at the rates of what they're giving to investors, they would want to also go about making some money. So this, like there are examples, right? Uh, in the invoice discounting base, you have companies that offer 15% and there are some companies that offer 16% as well. But why is Giraffe offering only a 12, 11 or 13%? is because they would, in order to be sustaining and running a profitable business, you need to go about keeping some bit of revenue for the operations of the business, scalability of the business. And I'm of the opinion, I don't think this 18% is going to be for long. Therefore, if you see my email, I said 15 to 18%. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you get it 15% also, it's another alternative where we are making fixed post-tax return, which is double digit, and it is nicer to have. Uh, again, it's a diversification, but that's the answer. So hope that clarifies. Other than that, uh, Nakul is asking how much rate at which producers will be discounting if they go back. Oh, they will not. They will not. They will never have a chance to discount the bills uh, uh, invoices with banks. Nakul, banks will only fund businesses that they understand. Home loan business, they can see touch feel. Uh, they will give corporate loans because they know they can see balance sheets. They can see. Uh, you know, future incomes and so on and so forth. They can give uh, asset back uh, leasing in terms of all, what an asset is worth, et cetera, et cetera. But if they don't understand the business, they will not go about funding. And I don't know if banks can go about funding uh, uh, movies unless it's given on a personal guarantee. All right, Nakul, thanks uh, for that confirmation. Kavita is asking, what happens if the production house shuts down, defaults, goes bankrupt? There's a personal guarantee, right, uh, uh, Kavita? Because if you see here, the money is being given on an outright sale, not necessary on all the other forms of incomes that is coming from the production house. So we are going to be discounting the outright purchase money that is going to be coming in, right? That the funding is already happened. So here the OTT platform is definitely going to be giving the money. And when the money comes in, the first right of access to it is towards the investors. Harman, uh, Sethu, have I missed out anything there? You, you, yes, yes, sir, you have covered it. But as I told, uh, since we are securitizing that particular cash flow for that particular project, it is only a project-based discounting which we do. Even the same production house might be doing project A, B, C. Uh, mm -hmm. even the, we, 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 we aren't looking into the, whenever we curate the opportunity, whenever it comes to the production house space, the more weightage is given towards that particular project or particular contract where, we, where the receivables are for us in this particular opportunity. And less weightage is given towards the other financials of the production house. Since we are getting the cash flow from the OTD, we are securitizing the cash flow. That is where we have to look in for. Got it. Fantastic. So uh, does that answer the question for you, Kavita? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what else? Mahesh is asking, what is the typical window from listing to subscribing? Oh, don't worry about this, uh, uh, Mahesh. All, all the logistics piece will be handled because I'm not looking at uh, my investors investing on one deal at a time. I will tell you all how I plan to deploy the money, what kind of money should get in. That will be coming in, you know, when I finish sending the clarification email and then we'll be getting on our, you know, one-to-one -one call. The purpose of doing this is so that we have a wider understanding of those questions that, you know, some very uh, 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 critical folks like Kavita, uh, then there is, I'm surprised Nakul is also coming, with, Orwell is going to come. So this helps us with this understanding at a surface level, but what is best for you at a personal level is what we're going to be discussing on our one-to-one -one calls. All right. So I am assuming that is taken care of. What if the contract is used to get money investment think, uh, by a different customer? Question was yeah. slightly uh, different, uh, but may, oh. maybe related as well. It's not not from a personal level, but if 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 Seto and the team identifies uh, an opportunity, and then they must have made a commitment to the production house by a certain time limit, they should have mo mobilized all the funds. So, ah, I see you know, what you're what saying. window. And then, because because that's the window available for us to subscribe to that opportunity, right? So. Good question. So typically, a movie, what happens here is, uh, you know, Nilesh comes with us from a previous company that we were working with. So he understands the kind of demand supply flow, right? So when the management is talking too well, to answer your question, it can be anywhere between seven days to 15 days initially. Now there are times that uh, opportunity is getting closed and as long as three months or four, uh, sorry, in three days or four days. But again, it depends on the deal size. We're talking about a crore, five crore, 10 crore, whatever it is, right? So uh, there is no straight answer to it, but the timeline is getting smaller and uh, sorry, shorter and shorter simply because they're getting that many more investors coming on board, right? Yeah. They were not working. Uh, 
until they are just exploring this channel partner uh, arrangement very recently prior to this it was all through their direct uh, you know in fact i think i we must be having anand here and anand reached out to me long time back in terms of sharath why you have not spoken to better invest yet i said they have not returned my call and if they have not returned my call i can't have a call so that's the very crude and brute answer to it but uh, the answer here to your question uh, uh, mahesh it can be anywhere between 3 to 5 days purely depending on the deal size that's coming okay right they have not they have never had to say no to a contract because they can always there's always i mean you're talking about 3000 odd registered investors no no uh, absolutely that, that that means we have to be on the case um when and that's when, why when they, and that's uh, why mahesh even before this deal happens you will get to yeah. know i mean i i'm looking at how we can make this much more easier uh, you know for, the reason why we've shared this with you is because giraffe as an alternative cannot be given to nris but better invest and ipv that we're bringing can be given to nris and that's why i will i will walk you through the logistics and the uh, you know hassle free experience when we get on our one on one call okay but thank you thank you for getting in uh, uh, urvil is dropped off da, 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 da. My, is there a better invest wallet that will hold up so i like the way you're asking the question my no they don't have a wallet mechanism just as yet but that's in the uh, that's in the works however the the purpose why the, at least the purpose what uh, wallet solves is anyways taken care of without the wallet the reason why they are getting the wallet is very different which we will get to see as and when the platform uh, uh, showcases that but at this point in time there is no wallet and uh, you know we can get the uh, uh, it's not going to hinder any of our investing experience is that correct harman and sethi yes sir absolutely yes. right sir you are saying this on a recorded line huh just letting you <laughs> All right. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I think I have gone about asking everything, and you know, I think we've had a very, very interactive call today. I had documented some of these questions, and I think we are all good so far. So, uh, any anything else that you'd like to ask? If uh, I mean, if you've missed out on anything at all, slowly, all the videos are getting turned off. Is that an indication? Is there any? Enough? Thank you very much. Sorry. Go ahead, Sudha. Sorry. Is there any tax liability on this money? Absolutely, government big brother has to make the money first, no? Whether it's the BJP, Congress, or India combined, big brother makes the money first. Thirty okay. percent, Sudha. Oh my God! Ah, okay. FD may be उतना ही जाता है, just in case. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, one Pam, last ahead. question. Um, uh, Sethu talked about this abandonment insurance. Huh. Like you said in the previous. all the insurance is only as good as if it's been claimed so want to know if they have claimed any of the abandonment insurance i don't think i follow the question sethu did you nilupam uh, 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 could you repeat the question once again please uh, no when sethu said how they are kind of ring fencing is they also have an abandonment insurance that they take correct uh, correct in case a project is shelved or something so that you know the investors money is protected but has any abandonment insurance been you know Uh, ah, okay. Has it been paid? Because we don't know if the insurance will hold, right? That kind of a thing. Okay. So Nirupama, I'll let the first part of the question be answered by Sethu. But let's understand something. If there's an insurance company and they've gone about underwriting a risk, which means they have said we will cover this risk, there is no way that they cannot cover it because they are governed by the IRDA. As you and me, as investors or any customer who's paying the premium. can go right away i think and they the company can have legal action so there's no reason once they have said that they underwrite the risk that an insurance company will say no we can't do this all the right. terms and conditions is defined right at the start now i'll let uh, sethu answer whether there has been a claim on the abandonment insurance just as yet yes so there has there hasn't been any uh, abandonment happened so far in the industry as we are, the deals which we are working with as we as i told we are we are onboarding movies at the last stage or even uh, once the shoot has been done at least 50 60 percentage of the shoot has been done that is when we onboard particular uh, big star movie if it is a small or mid size star movie as i told we 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 onboard them only after the movie is completed so in our case uh, the the window is very marginal uh, where the project going abandonment is very less here yeah all right awesome i think folks surprisingly we have covered 1 hour 45 minutes of our presentation today i was hoping this would get done within 1 hour but looks like we had good amount of interaction with good questions coming from all of you 
Uh, so I'm glad that we could finish this. I will call this our day today. But should there be any other questions, we will have this taken when I go about sending across the rational email in terms of what the next steps are going to be. If there is anything else, or no, there is no anything else. So we'll go through the email itself. So thank you. Uh, uh, I'm glad that we could have this call. Enjoy your weekend. And Setu and uh, uh, Harman, thank you for uh, you know taking the time out on a Saturday addressing the audience. All righty then. Uh, thanks, Setu. Thanks, Harman, once again. And uh, folks, uh, have a lovely weekend. For those of you coming at the 6 o'clock call, I will see you all then. Uh, but until then, have a lovely one. I will talk to you all very soon. Have a nice one.